Hey, welcome back to the Community Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Johnston Lynch, here on Big Condo Online. You know how we do. We always try to endeavor to bring someone interesting from the community that I want to hear from and I feel that you would like to hear from. And I'm joined here by a very interesting gentleman um, named David Hearn from Dusty Teapot, C- Dusty Teapot CIC. <laughs> yeah, the name. Everybody asks about the name. Well, I'm going to be like everybody, dusty teapot, bro. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> random noun, random adjective. We just, list of, list of nouns, list of adjectives, and we decided dusty teapot can mean anything, can mean nothing. But we do have a dusty teapot. I'm pretty sure, as a yeah. logo. A big, yeah, as a logo, but we actually have a big brown teapot that is getting more and more dusty as it goes on. <laughs> as long as you're not drinking coffee out of it. But um, <laughs> what's interesting about Dusty Teapot is a father and son operation, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I work with my son, Richard, and he does all the technical side of stuff. His um, undergraduate and postgraduate degrees are in media production. Mm-hmm. There's nothing he can't do on a computer. He says, if, you could, if I can imagine it, he can create it. Which wow. is pretty impressive. He's not let me down so far. No, well, no, I, exactly. It must be. How long have you guys been working together? I think you said like two years. Two or? years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We. I've got to say, we. Richard was drifting a bit. He was. He was doing some digitization of records and things mm. like this. All right. And um, you know, company digitization and all that sort of thing. And I've always been interested in history. I went to to university when I was fifty five for the first time. Wow, you're really yeah. a mature student. Was well, this, in, t- was in terms of years, I was mature. Yeah, in terms oh, of personality, far oh, from it. What are we talking? What are we? Are we talking about John Moore's? Yeah, I went to John Moore's to do history, and then I followed that up by going to University of Liverpool to do international slavery studies at post grad. Now, I mean, so, and we're going to get into that because I thought that was very interesting. But first of all, let's look at like uh, your tagline for the Dusty Teapot. It's uh, you aim to preserve, promote, and protect heritage of Merseyside. Yeah. How do you aim to do that? Where we're doing it, two ways. We've done some reproduction of old history books. I'm I, I'm a bit of a book fiend. I You know, other people collect whatever they collect. I collect books. Mm-hmm. And... Some of the old books are really difficult to find. And we've done, for example, we've done a digitization facsimile copy of William Enfield's History of Liverpool, 1773. And that is really, really tricky to find. It's about £400 when you find a copy. They did a reprint in 1973, which is £100. And it's the first history book of Liverpool. Wow. It tells a history of Liverpool up to 1773, and we wanted to get it to a wider audience. Now, this is when it was just like a little shipping village off the shore, wasn't it? Oh, 1773, it was a bit more than that. It, that's oh, how it started. Well, it I've started seen a lot of that. old pictures, so I probably haven't gone, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it was, a, it was a, a bit of a place by 1770. Yeah. I think that's probably why Enfield did the history. Right, right, because right. Because it was a case of, how did we get here, guys? Yeah, you know, you know, where did all this come from? Well, I mean, because also you're from the rural side. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I apologize uh, about that uh, now. Well, you know, we'll, we'll let you go. Yeah, thanks. But like the rural side, uh, what was interesting though is is that there's a lot of um, um, Viking pillaged villages over there, isn't it? Yep. You know, because a lot, what a lot of people don't know is is that there are a lot of bees. Uh, a lot of bee towns, you know, like Formby or yeah. Kirby or whatever, Greasby. Greasby. But yeah. uh, supposedly that is a, a, a suffix. Uh, if it ends in B-Y, it's usually because it was uh, Viking territory. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, Vikings came into Hoylake and uh, Mel's West Kirby area onto the top end of the mm-hmm. uh, Wirral. And um, there was quite a establishment, quite a community there. And they, they say, is it the Battle of Broomborough or something? People are Brumber? saying, yeah, they, they say it was, it was that, that's not the word I'm looking for, but mm. they, they say it was Bromborough where it was fought and it was a big battle between the Vikings and the Saxons sort of wow. thing. And the, the BBC did a programme a few years ago and they were testing DNA in people in Hoylake and Wessex. People said, you know, families lived here forever. Nobody, yeah, yeah, nobody yeah. can remember when we came here. And they tested this one guy, he's a fisherman from um, Hoylake, and they found his DNA was identical to people in Norway. All right. So he was Viking. Yeah. They came in. The Romans didn't particularly come up the Wirral. Probably no reason to. They, so, <laughs> so, so the Vikings were there, and 
you know, everybody thinks of Vikings as coming, killing and destroying and pillaging. that sort of thing and pillaging and that. What, they did not? Well, yeah, they did. But <laughs> well, well, you've got to do. You've got to start somewhere, haven't you? <laughs> and then when you've done all that and you get bored with it, so there's yeah. nothing on the TV, then you start doing farms and you start doing fishing and you start yeah. doing. You know, it's okay here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. as cold as Norway. No, it, well, definitely you know? not. No, so it rains you know, a let's, lot. Let's stay here a bit. Yeah, let's have yeah. a farm. Let's grow some some stuff. Let's um, let's have some cattle. Let's have some sheep. Let's <laughs> go fishing. Well, yeah, you know, let's settle pretty much and everything. Um, but like, so as a photographer, I mean, or I don't know, you're a collector of photos yeah, and everything like that. You know, a lot of your stuff, as you say, uh, was from old Wallace or whatever, yeah. that area and everything like that. Um, what started you into that? Well, the, that's funny. I, I do talks to groups. I do talk U3A history groups, talks at libraries and that sort of thing. I did a talk at Wallace History Society. Mm. And Richard came along with me because he hadn't heard the particular talk. And the guy came wandering over to me and said, do you know anything about old photographs? Mm. I said, I don't, but my son does. So he's over there. So I went to speak to him and said, what do you know about glass plate negatives? Because uh, right. they used to, before there was film, they take photographs on glass plate negative. You're talking um, A4 size. Yeah, yeah, things, yeah, yeah. Huge yeah, yeah. things. And Richard said, well, I know they're really difficult to clean. They're really difficult to store and they're really difficult to digitize. Why do you ask? He said, oh, we want some cleaning, storing, and digitizing. <laughs> and he said, yeah, okay, it's difficult, but I can do it. Yeah. And they'd got um, a Heritage Lottery Fund grant to do this. So Richard did all the work. And the more we were looking into them, they had a collection of photographs. But the more they looked into them, they tell a story. Yeah, of course. They tell the story of the town, often accidentally. Mm. They tell the story of the people. They tell the story of what happened there. And I got really interested in that. And the Historical Society did an exhibition yeah. at the um, town hall. No, sorry, at the library. Plenty of people went and have a look at it, and th this was great. And then we got talking to Wirral Archives. Mm. And we said, have you got any photographs of, of old Wall Wallasey, old New Brighton? Because New Brighton was a huge resort yeah. in its time. So they said, yeah, we've got loads. Come and have a look at them. So we went and had a look at them. And Richard said, well, what if we digitise these? Can we use them for mm. a book? Can we use them for an exhibition? And we'll give you digital copy and we won't charge you. We'll, we'll do it for, for nothing. Um, you can have digitis, digital copies that make them more accessible. Because yeah. at the moment, they're really inaccessible. You've got the, the glass plate negative and it's a, a negative. It's not even it's a kind, positive It's kind of like your stuff was on microfiche still. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's even wor even worse than that. It's, yeah, well, it's even more saying. difficult. You've got to get it out. You've got to put it on a light box, mm. and you still only get a negative image. Yeah, of course. So everything's reversed. So you, yeah, you know. So we said we'll do do them. Give you digital copies. So if somebody comes in and wants to have a look at that, you can show them a digital copy on the computer. If we can use them, they said, "Yeah, great, no problem." So in the last twelve months, we've done four exhibitions. Right. We've done one of Old Wallasey, two of New Brighton, and one of Liverpool. And, but Jen, you've also produced these into books. Yeah, yeah. And uh, now, can people find these books? Are they on sale anywhere? Or? Yeah. Now, it's slightly tricky. We have two companies. We've got the Devil's Nest, which is a community interest company. We've got a trading company. Sorry, I got that the wrong way around. We've got the Dusty Teapot that's the, the community interest company. That's Devil's right. Nest is our trading company. Uh -huh. Now, that sounds a bit bad, but Devil's Nest was the first community in New Brighton. Wow. And if you go to devilsnest.co.uk, you can find the books online there. All right. So it's not like you could go like to News of Nowhere or something no. like that. You, no. have to, you have to purchase them online. We, we, we have sold stuff at News of Nowhere um, in the past, and Waterstones have, have sold some of our stuff. Um, National Museums, Liverpool, stock several of our books, right. um, several of the history books, and um, my, my two books. But... Um, yeah, you get them online, and we sell them at our exhibitions. Because when we do our exhibition, we don't charge. Yeah. We want yeah. people... People have had a bad time, this pandemic thing. A lot of people have been isolated, especially a lot of older people have felt isolated. They've been scared of going out. They've been nervous. And what we wanted to do was get them into the exhibition, show them some old pictures, fire up some memories, and get them talking, get them chatting. Yeah, but, you know, David, I got to say, though, bro, I mean, you know, um, it's a lot of work. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of work that you and your son do. And preserving history is an important 
um, job because like somebody has to go around and be, you know, the chronicler or, you know, the historian, the griot, you know what I mean? So it's, it's definitely something that, you know, I know magnanimously you say you and your son have been doing this and stuff like that, but it is, it is something that, you know, it's worthwhile to, you know, get paid for as well. Yeah. It'd be nice to, but then also too is, is that, so you also, um, I was asking if you've done podcasting before, but then you also kind of like said you were on Channel 5. When they were doing a project, I think it was like River Mersey, Then and Now? Yeah, they did a program. Tell me about R- that. River Mersey, Then and Now. And um, oh, I got a call. What's it? Oh, I can't remember. 2019. Got a call and um, said, do you know anything about Camel Lads? And I said, well, no, a bit about Camel Lads. I said, well, if we email some questions through... Can you email the questions through and look to them and said, yeah, I can, I can answer those. Oh, great. Okay. Could you be on, um, on film? Mm. We're going we're gonna to film this. And um, I said, yeah, no problem. It's fine. And almost as a, a throwaway remark at the end of it said, you don't know anything about Liverpool and slave trade by any chance, do you? <laughs> and I said, well, funnily enough, yeah. It's, it's funnily a, enough, bit, I, I uh, yeah. went to school for that. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a postgrad degree in that. Um, Funnily enough, it's, you know, it's an interest of mine, that, yeah. So, okay, can we email some questions through? And I said, yeah, fine, can you? He said, yeah, okay, I can do all those. I know all those. Great, fine. So could you talk about that as well? I said, yeah, obviously, no problems. And they said, uh, tomorrow afternoon, two o'clock? Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, well, I won't sleep tonight because I've got to make sure I've got all the facts right and I know all the stuff there. And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I did, and it was the last day before lockdown that we mm. filmed it. Wow. And um, I was doing it, and you... you Nobody can tell on here, but I'm not terribly tall. And right. we, we got there. And we're filming it by um, the ferry terminal at uh, Woodside in Birkenhead. And the guy's there, and he's crouching down behind the camera as he's filming me. And the cameraman looked at the producer, and he said, light box. He said, yeah. Went back to the car and brought this box. They stood me on a box to do it. Yeah. You know, so, okay, I'm on the TV, but I'm standing on a box yeah. for them to film me. It's not good. It's yeah, not yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, I really tried to grow about six or seven inches, but it didn't work. <laughs> I, I really, really put a lot of effort in. It didn't work. <laughs> but, yeah, um, what I want to do, or what Richard and I both want to do, we want to get this history out there. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. We want to show people. Well, all and right. We want to start people talking about Dave, it. Dave, Dave, don't jump ahead of the guy. Sorry, sorry. Show, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? I'm asking I, the I, questions. I, I, have a, I, have a, I have a list. Now, <laughs> now, the thing about it is, Dave, I mean, I, I have to do this, you know, because, I mean, we, you know, uh, you know, we had a little altercation off camera. I had to do this because everybody who knows me knows I'm a conspiracy theorist. Okay. And everything like that. And when you mentioned about camel lairs, I had to hit you with the rumor about the Titanic and everything and you just said bollocks I don't know (laughs) but like come on Dave (laughs) you know the rumor about the Titanic there were two sister ships the Titanic and the Masonic and the Titanic caught fire and then they had let out the Masonic and everything and you know the people behind it you know sunk that ship but now you said they wouldn't do that there's millions of pounds (laughs) involved absolutely Absolutely and there's millions, millions of pounds of, of embarrassment, Dave. Yeah, no. <laughs> now, you did admit that there was a fire. There was a fire. There was a fire <laughs> in one of the bunkers. This was not uncommon. Not uncommon, but it did it happen not unco- before the ship was supposed to take off. Yeah. Remember, this is the, the Titanic. Man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. So, so, you know, but then, so what happened? They, they let the ship go they and let the ship there was go. a little fire going on? Yeah, they let the ship go. See, it, it, I, was, I it wasn't uncommon. It's happened. All right. It happened. And what you can do, you can control it. You you stifle the air to it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the fire will go out. You use the other bunkers. You took a colossal amount of coal that yeah, the ships yeah. burnt to get across the Atlantic. Yeah. No, exactly. So you seal that one off, let it burn. But what it probably did, what it probably did, it got hot. Mm-hmm. And it probably buckled some plates. It might yeah. have burst some joints yeah. and this sort of thing. So when the Titanic hit the iceberg, mm-hmm. and there is a photograph of an iceberg with a big red mark of paint on the side of it where it's hit um that could have weakened things yeah and it could but have not hit, on purpose but not saying. on purpose yeah no not on purpose you, you talk apart from apart from anything the equivalent of millions of pounds 1500 people died well they didn't expect that because supposedly <laughs> no listen there weren't Dave, enough lifeboats for the wall they they 
what happened was there was supposed to be a ship that 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 was sent out to get everybody. But what happened was is that with all the fireworks that was going off, you know, I mean, I don't say fireworks, but you know, the flares. flares. The with all the flares that was going off, there was a misunderstanding, and you know, um, the ship that was supposed to rescue them was late. And everything, you know what I mean? But, like, either way, it's, it's tragedy. I don't want to make mockery of a tragedy no. um, and, and, and stuff like that. But I just thought it was interesting because of your historian background, you know, and just trying to find out, hmm, at least there was a fire. But either way you look at it is you also not just have written photo books, but you have written, um, uh, there was two books that you have mentioned, um, Slave Streets of Liverpool and the 27th of June. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? Because I think we all know about the slave streets, like meaning like streets like Rodney Street yeah. were named after slave owners. That's what you mean, isn't it? Yeah, what it what it was, there's in the book, I think there's 105 streets mm-hmm. which in Liverpool and on the Wirral, mm-hmm. which are named after people involved in the slave trade, Yeah, involved in slavery in general, because it wasn't just the slave trade, remember. Mm-hmm. You know, Liverpool was involved in sending ships to West Africa collecting Africans who had been kidnapped Mm -hmm. and taking them and selling them into slavery. But that was only one side of it. Part of it as well was the trade in goods that were cultivated by enslaved people. Wasn't this like sugar Sugar, and and cotton, cotton, tobacco and all that? And that was coming into Liverpool in enormous quantities. Mm -hmm. And people just turned a blind eye to it. We've had big sugar mills here, haven't yeah. we? And then tobacco mills, cotton mills, and all the, of that other kind of stuff. It, uh, right down in Bolton and everything like that. And it's, all over 50% in, what, 1820, 50% of all the cotton mills in the world mm-hmm. were in the county of Lancashire. Wow. You know, something like one million people were directly involved in the cotton trade. It was huge business. Yeah. And this was cotton grown by enslaved people. Yeah. And because it was 3,000 miles away, because there's no TV and all that sort of thing, people just close their minds off to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Here comes the cotton. We're going to make a lot of money. The, no concept of the fact that the cotton was coming in at a price that couldn't have been achieved if you were paying people to do the work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've got to talk about that. Um, people in Liverpool owned plantations, in the Caribbean, own plantations in Guyana, in the in South America, own plantations in the southern states of America, where they had enslaved people working. 1833, mm. the British government puts a stop to um, slavery in the British Empire, mm-hmm. except for land covered by the East India Company. They're yeah. exempt. So they did this, and they paid compensation. Yeah. Did they pay the compensation to the people who had been appallingly treated, worked to death? No. Right. They were just left to it. They yeah. paid the compensation to the guys who owned the plantations. Yeah. Because, oh, well, you're not going to be able to produce this so cheaply now, so do it. John Gladstone, who lived, as you, you say, in yeah, Rodney Gladstone, Street. Yeah, Gladstone, what is it, Gladstone Park or something? Like yeah, well, he lived in, in Rodney Street, John Gladstone. And he had three sons, one of whom was William Ewart Gladstone, who was four times Prime Minister of Britain, four times Chancellor of the Exchequer. He got over £100,000 in compensation wow. for the enslaved people that he owned Wow! when he was forced to release them. Hmm. He had to be forced to release them. He wasn't going to do it voluntarily. No, of course not. Though. But you took £100,000. A soldier in the army at the same time would be on £18 a year. Mm-hmm. So you could imagine the colossal sum of money. 18 pounds a year? 18 pounds a year. A how soldier in an survive? infantry regiment. How, how are you going to survive on that? You, you survive because prices were I know prices were. got to be really low, but 18 pounds? 18 pounds a year is what a soldier would get. Jesus. And John Gladstone gets 100,000 pounds. The injustice. Yeah, um, absolutely. Let uh, me, wait, yeah, let me hit on. you with your book... Um, the 27th of June, because one, my birthday's on the 29th. Right. But, That's but, why I wrote it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But um, what's, you said you wanted to pick a, a day. Uh, tell us about that. What, what it was, I, I bought um, a newspaper. Mm-hmm. The um, Gores Liverpool, um, what's it called? The Gores Liverpool Contemporary, or something like that. It matters not. And it was a newspaper for the 27th of June, 1793. Mm-hmm. And... I like old stuff. Yeah. 
and um, I was looking at it. I think pretty well all the adverts in it and pretty well all the articles had a link with Liverpool and slavery. Yeah. Either in um, goods coming in, grown by enslaved people, or actually linked with the slave trade. Yeah. And what I did was I, we took the article out, sort of clipped the article on, and I did an explanation of what it was all about. Yeah. Because it didn't say anything about it, of course. Yeah, because obviously they were selling people in the paper as well. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, not particularly in that one. Well, um, <laughs> you know, but that was perhaps just a... You a, could find an article. I could find one. <laughs> we, we, we've, got, we've got one. Um, 1756. Yeah. A uh, copy of the Liverpool Mercury. Yeah. And they're selling, it says, 11 Negroes. Yeah. So. Yeah. And this was like at a strange flags place, wasn't it? That particular one was at a coffee house in Water Street. Of course it would be, but <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, where, where, where else? <laughs> hey, yes. Well, I don't know. No. Uh, you come here for your coffee, and you could just buy buy some yeah. black people. All right. Anyway, let me move on from this one. Tell, but, like, well, no, <laughs> have have a, a think about that one because mm. go go back to the eighteen pounds a year. Yeah. For a soldier, that's his that's his wages. Yeah. But that is expected to to die any day in a in a war. So. Um, What's his name? Um, William Rathbone the Third, mm-hmm. in the seventeen fifties, bought a fourteen-year-old African boy, mm. and he sent the boy, person, a human being, as a present to his friend in Germany. Mm-mm. He paid thirty-one pounds <laughs> for a person mm. who he sent as a present in a box. I don't know. Just, uh, in the, the there's a, the in the the description of it, and it's in Rathbone's history. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not making it up. If you get the history of Rathbone's, um, because they're still around, they're bankers now. Um, and it said um, a boy very clean in his habits. Yeah, and yeah. You know, you you. Oh, don't know. Yeah. I'm sorry, no. it upsets well, me. Well, it should, it, it should. But let me let me, let me hit you with two things yeah. that you might know as a study of a. Uh, uh, international slave history or whatever um and everything is is that in in part of my studies around this um not all uh, black people were slaves in this time period and everything and what a lot of people don't know is so like uh you know as you could say the blacks from the north (laughs) right is that um there was a black man who actually was written or it's written somewhere that he was the first one to buy a slave or something like that. Uh-huh. Um, John a Negro or something and everything. And um, he had a plantation. What? Right. Do you know of any of these kind of uh, situations where there were uh, more well-to-do black people who actually had plantations? I've I've got to be honest and say no, I don't. I'm sure oh, it's happened. Well, yeah, your teacher's fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah but my my my, my <laughs> stuff. <laughs> the the post grad degree was part about historic slavery and part about modern day slavery. I'm just trying to say, bro, I like to, I like to educate but people in this new generation absolutely. of black excellence. Um, one last thing, then, um, do you know about Abu Bakr from um, um, West Africa? Um, who uh, sailed away with a community of Africans mm-hmm. um, from Mali um, on like three ships, <laughs> you know, across, you know, uh, across the sea okay. and everything. Meaning that blacks didn't just come over here, you know, um, under the ships. No. Um, some of them were seafarers and themselves yeah. from Africa. Do you know of any of that? I've, I've got to say, I don't don't know that specific story. I'm going to have to send you some information. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> I'm going to educate please you, brother. Please do. I've, I've, I was hoping. I was hoping, you know what I mean? Abu Bakr. I want, I want, I want, to, I want to know. <laughs> Every day is a school day. Every day. <laughs> I love that. So, now let's no. get to, like, uh, you know, like, hopefully, you know, uh, what would you, would you hear to promote? Obviously, you're here to promote Dusty Teapot, but what I find fascinating about your journey and, and what's going on is, is the fact that, that, you know, you have a dream, <laughs> right? Um, there's something that you or your son or whatever your company would like to do, and that is is that you guys want to do an oral history. Yeah. And you want to do a, and you, you've actually kind of like identified a retirement community um, in 
Mariner's Park. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful name. I never heard of it. It's um, tell me about Mariner's Park and what you guys want to do. Mariner's Park is in Wallasey, right by the river. Mm-hmm. Have you a look? And now there are there's houses, there's apartments, there's sheltered accommodation, there's a nursing home. When you retire from the sea, you can apply to go there, and if you fit the criteria, you can go. You, they pay rent, but it's highly subsidised. And you can... Oh, it not sound awful. You can live out the rest of your life there. You know, you, you can start in a house and then you can move to sheltered accommodation. And if, if you become ill or whatever, you can go to the nursing home. You don't have to go finding other places. Your family doesn't have to worry about you. There's, there's guys around, there's people around, there's staff around. And there's people who understand what it was like to go to sea. Mm-hmm. And um, and also for some of them who might have partners, you said yeah, their partners could absolutely be there as well. And the, the the partners can carry on; they can stay if the if the seafarer dies, they they they're not thrown out. Oh wow, they can stay, mm. and that's fine. You know, you you you're into the into the the deal. And we've done stuff for them. We've done talks to them about um, shipping and all that sort of thing. And we've done some memory sessions. Yeah. And we take, I've got some old charts and we take some old books along and we do a slideshow of ships, uh, pictures of ships, and you get people talking. Yeah. And they start telling stories. And, you know, guys who, oh, there's, there's a particular guy there and he, he's in a wheelchair and he's very quiet. And we brought up in one of the slideshows a picture of a ship. And before I could tell him which ship it was, it was an Elder Dempster ship, sailed out of Liverpool. It was called the Apapa. A river in West Africa, the Apapa. And this voice came from the back. That's the Apapa. Mm-hmm. I was on her for six years. Wow. I could tell you stories about that ship that make your hair curl. Yeah. And he went on and he did tell the stories and he did make her hair curl. And um, he was going, he talked for 15 minutes. Yeah. And when he was going out, his pal pushed, pushed him out sort of thing. And the guy who organized it all said to me, I've never heard that guy speak before. Wow. We'd, we'd awoken something in him. Mm-hmm. A happy time of his life. No, exactly, exactly. You know, he, was, he was, you know, perhaps, you could say perhaps an, an unhappy time of his life yeah. now. You know, oh, yeah, he's, exactly. He's stuck and he's, he's not, not well yeah. and he's frail and, you know, the, the excitement has gone from his life. But when he was on that ship, that was exciting times. Going Look. ashore in West Africa, being on the ship, being, you know, one of a band of brothers. yeah. But also, too, is, is that you mentioned how this is like uh, these guys are from like that time before there were those big shipping containers Absolutely. like in the 70s and stuff like that. And like uh, we see these shipping containers all the time. You yeah. know, if you're in Liverpool, you know, every time you're going down like Buda Way or something like that, you know. And um, also, too, is, is that I can't, you know, I, I mean, I'm somewhat of a documentarian myself and I can't tell you how important it is for uh, not just to capture the story stories of those people while they're still here but also to capture those moments for their children yeah do you know what i mean and everything else like that you know and like uh because i said i was involved in a project around around the shabines and like uh, i interviewed a gentleman who was uh, one of the singers at the time and like his daughter had recently found found me whatever and contacted me and was interested if i had any footage which i do and stuff and you know just even not even knowing me whatever just even just starting to cry to know that she there is a living memory of her father yeah and everything like that yeah so i mean you know yeah that's amazing so i would like people out there to understand this part of the podcast with the dusty teapot because what david has been doing has been i think and i'm hoping that you think has been phenomenal as far as uh capturing details like within pictures um his written word but then now he's looking to capture the oral history of people um you know and uh but he's he's been magnanimous thus far he's been doing all of this stuff on his own back you know, and like he doesn't seem to know about how to do crowdfunding. <laughs> and so I just want to just help the man out by saying, hey, you know, you should be crowdfunded to do this oral history. Mariners Park, you know, I mean, they are actually supported by a charity, as you said. Yeah. Um, and it's called the Nautilus Welfare Fund. Mm-hmm. 
And you know As a charity You say we ain't got no money But <laughs> <laughs> I love it when people say that But either way <laughs> You know yeah. That's why you have to Make this appeal Don't you Dave Yeah bitch Yeah we do He's like No no no, no I can do, do it myself No you can't Dave no, no, <laughs> You we, shouldn't we, have to <laughs> no, we, 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 we've got to, we've got to, we've got to get paid for our time somehow. We've got a lot of time going to go into this. We, we want. Fil- you want to record it before it disappears. Yeah. That's a, that's you a terrible get thing. That old, you want to get that old guy back yeah. and to share his stories once again. Share his stories. You know, about, yeah, and everything um, before, before it's lost again to yeah. memory. Yeah. Before, and the, the pandemic has thrown this into focus. Yeah. You know, a lot of the people, you know, it was a hard life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the ship. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't. A, you didn't just sit there like you know my previous life, writing things on pieces of paper and stuff like that. It was hard physical work, yeah. and these guys aged doing it, and you know it has taken its toll on them. They've they've lost people in the, they, they 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 locked down very very severely. Um, lots of control. They didn't let people out of the park. The park incident has been there since eighteen eighty eight. That's mm-hmm. when it was started, and they were strict with the people yeah. to save their lives. Yeah. And some it worked and some it didn't. Yeah. And we want to get these stories before the inevitable happens. Exactly. And, and you talk about doing something for the families. Part of what we're going to do, say, say I was interviewing you and you were telling me about your um, life. We'd ask if you had photographs. Mm-hmm. Cause we, we're going to, we're going to film it all. Yeah. We're going we're to put it on, on YouTube so that people can see it. With, with the people's permission. Uh, exactly. People exactly, it. Dave. You understand. So, I mean, because we have to come down to the end now, but either way you look at it is, I'm just hoping that people who watch this can understand that um, history is important to preserve, uh, it's important to promote, and it's important to protect. Absolutely, it is. Do you, do you understand what I just said? Yeah, <laughs> I do. That's what we're doing. That's I what we're doing. I know, I know, I know, Dave. I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I would like to thank you, David David Hearn, um, Dusty T. Pot, CIC. Um, please, uh, you know, if you can, write comments below. Share some of your stories on this uh, um, video that you will see. Uh, it'll be please available do. on uh, YouTube and uh, cool. Facebook and all of that. But also, too, is, is that... Encourage Dave to set up crowdfunding, right? <laughs> <laughs> and say, hey, Dave, I'd love to support your project on your oral history of Mariners Park and everything like that. And then we could get the ball rolling. Yeah. So that way we could do this. Dave, thank you very much thank for joining me Thank you very much for asking me along. It's been podcast. great. Well, no, wor- no, no worries, bro. And either way you look at it is, I'm Chase Johnson Lynch. You've been watching the Community Podcast. And for now, we're out of here.